What I learned from Dee Clark was so inspiring. It just was a great speech. I'm going to take it home with me. The thing that I really took away from it was that I can be inspired by myself because I have greatness within me. Follow the three C's, consciousness, conviction, and commitment. You have to follow those every day. It's really inspiring and I'm going to take a, a lot of it away from like my everyday life and try to get better. The sky's the limit. He was so full of life. Our speaker today has overcome many obstacles on his way to success. His working career began in a warehouse stocking shelves and unloading inventory from trucks. Today, he is the corporate vice president of the same company where he used to stock shelves and has grown the organization to a multi-million dollar corporation. His successful ideas have enabled him to speak in Europe, Africa, the Caribbean, and throughout the United States. He is also an author of a, of a children's storybook. Amen. Amen. Today, he will be speaking on the topic of the keys to the transformation to greatness. Let's please all put our hands together to help me welcome Mr. Darrell Clark, affectionately known as D. Clark. Amen. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Tolliver, Deacon Steve Butler, thank you so much for this invitation to uh, come out and be a part of your ministry and to share a few words with you today. Uh, the first thing that I'd like you to do is to look at someone next to you and say, you have greatness in you. you, have greatness in you. See, the greatest investment that we can make is an investment in ourselves. Yes. And I want to congratulate everyone that is here because less than 5% of the population will actually take the time out to come and hear a message like this to invest in themselves. Yes. So give yourselves a round of applause. You see, God will put pearls in an oyster. Amen. And an oyster is a scavenger at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. God put gold in the earth, yeah. diamonds in the earth, yeah. rubies in the earth. Mm -hmm. And you and I were made in the likeness and image of God, so he had to put something in us. Yeah. And that something that is in us is greatness. Amen. So today I'm going to talk about the three C's. The three C's of the transformation to greatness. Now we know scripture that says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. Your mind. Come on now. You see, I haven't always been the man that you see up here today. I mean, I was always handsome. But, <laughs> but I had to transform into this man that you see today. When I was in my prime elementary years, I lost my father to incarceration. I was in four different elementary schools in four straight years. Fast forward several decades. Now I'm on tour in Africa with Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Touring, touring the palaces of African chiefs and their bishops, speaking with them and teaching them. We went to one village and there were three little boys, Solomon, Francis, and Benjamin. I took out my book and I sat down with them and I read them the story. There were a lot of other little kids around, but I read them my story and I showed them my picture on the back and told them that this was my book and I wrote it and it came from my mind. I created it and I was telling them that they had greatness in them too. And I gave them one of my books. We got on the bus to leave that village and these boys, almost all the children, they were running after the tour bus saying, I am Daryl Clark, I am Daryl Clark, I am Daryl Clark. And that felt so good that I was able to inspired them. Yes. So the keys of transformation to greatness, renewing our mind. The first C is consciousness. Consciousness. What we are aware of. How do we increase our level of awareness? 
I got here a little early and I was sitting right down here in the front and I was speaking with Deacon Lindsay and he said, Daryl, education is the most important thing. And he's right. The word education comes from the Latin word a duco. A meaning to lead and duco meaning out from. To lead out from ignorance and into knowledge. Out from weakness and into strength. So how do we increase our level of awareness? How do we increase our knowledge? By reading. You see, the average American reads only one book a year. Can you guess what that book is? Facebook. You got it. <laughs> you study miscellaneous things and you'll end up with miscellaneous results. Look at what you're studying and then look at your results. How do we increase our level of awareness? By reading. If you just read 10 minutes, you just read 10 minutes a day, you would read one book a month. In one year, you would have read 12 books. In five years, you would have read 60 books. What if you just focused your reading on what your subject matter is, your area of expertise, where you are right now in your career, where you work? What if you did like I did and read one book a week? In one year, you would have read 50 books. In five years, you would have read 250 books. Does anybody in here have a computer? Has anyone ever downloaded a document? Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever downloaded a document? Okay. When you read books, you are downloading the consciousness of the author. Increase your level of awareness. You know, if I was to tell you guys that Martin Luther King and, and uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Tony Robbins and Winston Churchill were all going to be at my house next Saturday. Somehow you would find a way, to, and, and Jesus was going to be at my house next Saturday. Somehow you would find a way to get there. The thing is, they are in my house. They're in the form of books. And you can go back to them. A book is a present that you can open again and again. So the first C is consciousness. The second C of transformation is conviction. Now Webster defines conviction as a strong belief or to believe without doubt. We know that as faith. You've got to have faith if you're going to make it in life. You must believe in yourself in a power greater than yourself and do the very best you can. You have to have that faith that Paul talks about to be able to call forth those things that be not as though they were. You have to have faith if you're going to make it in life. My grandmother, she's no longer with us. She was a little short lady. Some of you may know her. Her name was Pearl Jones. She was barely over four feet tall. But she had conviction. She had belief. When I was a little boy, probably in the sixth grade, I was in her house and I was sitting on her sofa and I had, she had like this little coffee table and I had my feet up on the coffee table. And my grandmother came in the house and she saw my feet up on that coffee table and her little Trinidadian accent, she said, boy, you better take your feet off my table before I throw you across the room. <laughs> now I knew deep inside that she couldn't do it. <laughs> but the conviction in her voice made me say, I better take my feet off this table because she's at least going to try. <laughs> conviction. You, your faith must be backed by action. Yes. Scripture says faith without work is dead. Yes. Tony Robbins said, faith without action is the beginning of delusion. But faith with action creates miracles. You have to have faith because some trying times are going to come your way and you can lean on that faith. Y'all can tell by the way I'm standing up here who I'm backed by. Now when I, was, when I was dating my wife right before I asked her to marry me and we got engaged, there were members of my own family who said to my wife, Daryl's going to be stuck at that same dead-end job forever. You sure you want to get into this thing with him? 
people who should be the number one members of the encouragement club were the number one members of the discouragement club. Anybody know family members like that, what I'm talking about? You've got to have faith, man. And, you know, my nephew Alex, he has a saying. A snake is still a snake, no matter where it comes from. Right. You gotta have that faith. And once upon a time, there were these two frogs, and these frogs were hopping down the street, and there were two glasses of milk in front of these frogs, and both of them hopped into a glass of milk. They were eating their own glass of milk. And the first frog, you know, he just was, was kicking, and he was trying to get out this milk. And he kept on kicking, and he decided to stop. And he went below the surface of the milk and he drowned. The other frog, he just kept on kicking. And he just on kicking. He kept that faith and he kept believing. And he was in that milk and he just kept on kicking. And then finally he turned that milk up into butter and slid on out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to have faith. Amen. Number one, the first C is consciousness. Yes. The second C is conviction. Yes. The third C is commitment. A commitment to your goals. And commitment means doing it until. Yes. When will the baby walk? The baby will walk when it walks. The baby's committed to walking. You know, you don't tell me, man, what's wrong with you? No, he's good. The baby's committed to walking. And you have to be committed to your goals. Think about that. What are your goals? What do you want out of life? What do you really want out of life? What do you want to achieve? And then, take out the pen and write it down. Write your goals down. There's power in the pen. Do you know that 97% of adults have never never written a goal down. Writing it down is a subjective process. It is a neuro, a, a psycho-neuro-associative process that engages the subconscious mind that causes you to focus. Write it down and then read it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Read it as often as you can, all the time. This is a process that has worked for others and it will work for you too. Think about your goals and visualize them. See yourself having achieved those goals. Before you can be a millionaire, you have to be a mind in there. You have to see it in your mind first. We know scripture that says where there is no vision, the people do what? We are a people of vision. Use your higher faculty of imagination and visualize yourself having achieved your goals. Ed Hillary, in 1951, he tried to climb Mount Everest. That was one of his goals. He didn't know exactly how he was going to do it, but he knew he was going to do it. In 1951, he failed. In 1952, he failed. In 1953, he started again. He didn't know exactly how he was going to do it. He just knew he was going to put this foot here and take this pick and put it here and pull himself up and then take the other foot and put it here and, and, and put the pick here and pull himself up. And in 1953, he conquered Mount Everest, the first man to do it. And now that took off the barrier that it wasn't possible to do. There are thousands of bodies encased in that mountain today of people who didn't make it. You don't know what kind of obstacles you're going to face up there. You get temperatures below zero, sub-zero temperatures, avalanches, snowstorms, windstorms. People didn't come back down from that mountain. Today, you've got paraplegics climbing Mount Everest. Paraplegics. What can you do with conviction, consciousness, conviction, and commitment that, that isn't as difficult as climbing Mount Everest? If a paraplegic can climb, climb Mount Everest, what can you do? You know, there was, a, there was an old farmer, and this farmer had a donkey, and he felt like there was no more use for this donkey. So what he did was he had an old well, and he took the donkey, he tossed the donkey down the well. Then he figured out, all right, well, I might as well just bury it. So he went and got a shovel, took some shovel, and started 
throwing it into the well to bury this donkey. He just kept shoveling. Then he looked over and he saw the donkey was still there. So he was wondering what was happening. So he took the shovel again and he threw the dirt in there and the donkey was like this, shaking the dirt off and kept on stepping up. And the farmer just kept throwing dirt in there and finally the donkey just shook it off and he got to the top and he just ran off. <laughs> Sometimes things are gonna happen to you on your way to your goal. Yes. And you just gotta shake it off. Shake it off. Look at somebody next to you and say, shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> in conclusion, research has shown and proven that the practice of these ideas work and leads to transformation and greatness. Greatness. When you think big, you'll do big and win big. What is big? B-I-G? No, it's not the rapper. B, books. Information, waking your consciousness. I, individuals that inspire you and deepen your conviction. Get mentors. Warren Buffett had a mentor. It's Benjamin Graham. Bill Gates had a mentor, it's Paul Allen. Oprah Winfrey said she had two mentors. Kobe Bryant said he had five. Get a mentor, books will help you do that. G, goals. Goals, set goals that inspire you because they make you stretch. They make you go beyond where you have ever gone before. It was Oliver Wendell Holmes who said that a man's mind stretched by a new idea never goes back to its original dimensions. So set goals that will make you stretch and inspire you. Dr. Naeem Akbar said that transformation is possible and transformation is real. And I agree with him. Transformation happens every day. Everything in the universe is steadily transforming. The bees transform, the butterflies transform, the sun, the moon transform, earth is transforming, life is transforming, every cell, every molecule is constantly transforming. Certainly the consciousness of the human being can transform. The keys of transformation is the human being's ability to understand who and what it is, to be able to marshal the energy of strength which is the power to overcome fear, to be able to generate the creative visionary possibility of vision that gives you the ability to transcend the real and go from the possible to the impossible. Go from the impossible to the possible and make it real. To be able to take conviction and transform reality from what it is to what it can become. To be able to constitute through the power of will, commitment, and stick to that puts you in there and makes you ride the race until the race is finished. Never letting up, never letting go, never being put down. Being able to be resilient and to bounce back no matter what forces come your way. To rise against every kind of adherence, every kind of obstruction, every kind of instrumental activity that moves against your life and your power and to learn to navigate your own life processes and to take the power of self-control and to say you can move on me but you cannot take me. I was connected to the God at the beginning of the world and I am still connected to that God because that God moves around this room as it moves throughout this room and as that God touches you and as that God touches me, if the God that made it all can't be conquered, we can't be conquered either. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up.